Hello and welcome to another radtooths.com flash tutorial. In this tutorial, I will ex be explaining how the text tool works, and then I'm going to show you some cool things that we can do with our text. So when we select our text tool and then go to the properties panel, we can see these various options here. We can choose whether or not it's static, dynamic, or input text, and we'll just keep it at static text for now. Static basically means the text is not going to be changing. So if we type in some text, uh, basically we're going to have like one line of text here. And we can change the font by selecting our text and then clicking here and then picking out a, a decent font. I'm just going to leave it at Century Gothic for now. And we can change the font size by sliding this bar here and we can change the color to basically any color we want. We can come here and use this color palette here. So I'm just going to select a sort of a green, dark green color. And we can make it bold, we can make it italic, and we can change the, the alignment. And we can edit the paragraph options. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hit enter and I'm going to type in a new paragraph here. So if we select this paragraph option here, we can uh, we can change the indent, which is going to indent each new paragraph. And we can also change we can change a lot of stuff. We can change uh, the line spacing, which is going to increase the line spacing, uh, left margin, right margin, and etc. And uh, there's another option here called uh, that changes how the the text is going to be displayed. So if we use device fonts, this will only work if. Uh, whoever is viewing the flash has that font on their system. So generally you don't want to be using device fonts unless you're using Arial or something common like Sans Serif or Times New Roman. Uh, bitmap text is basically uh, using bitmaps to display the uh, to display the fonts. So it's generally going to be very pixelated. So we don't generally want to use that unless you're doing sort of a mock-up for a web page or something. Uh, what we're generally going to be using is anti-alias for animation and this gives us a nice smooth vector lines for our text. And there's also anti-alias for readability depending on what version of Flash you're using. And this will just this will generally give more uh, more crisp edges to your text but if you're going to be animating with uh, this option anti-alias for readability then your animation can sometimes run a bit slow. So generally I just go with anti-alias for animation. Now I'm just going to zoom out here so we can see our text. And another thing we can do, and this usually makes it look kind of nice, is we can, can change this option here which is the character spacing or letter spacing. And that'll just put more space between each of our characters here. I generally raise this to about two or three if you're doing like a header or a label for something it tends to look a little nicer uh, let's see what else can we do here oh we can uh, if, so if we run this if we test this um, this movie here you can see that we can't really select this text so it's good for little flash animations but if you want your user to be able to select the text if they say if they want to copy it uh, you can select this option right here which makes it selectable. So I've clicked on that and now if we run our movie you can see that we can select this text. Although it seems to have seems to have changed our our line spacing. Our line, our line spacing seems to get thrown out the window here. Ah, oh, there we go. So here we've got our text, and we can also change this to dynamic text. 
and what dynamics text uh, does is it allows you to change the contents of this text box using action script now in order to change the content of the text with action script we have to again give it an instance name so we'll call this my text and then once we've given it an instance name we can come up here to our action script and we can change the text of this text box using our action script. So if we want to change that text we have to use a certain variable of our instance. So we've got our object which we created uh, which is called my text and we have to refer to the text variable of that object if we want to change it. And then we use brackets uh, to indicate what our text is going to be. So if we type in hello world and then we run this animation we'll see that we have here our dynamic text now another way of changing this text is to instead of just uh, instead of giving the text object an instance name we can also assign it a variable and that's this uh, this little box right here so if we give this text box a variable name uh, that, then whatever that variable is set to will be the text that goes in here. So if we call this var text, and then in our action script we set var text to equal this is our variable text, and then we test this, we can see that the variable, sorry, the, the text that we set this variable to is now the text that is in our text box. So that's the basics of uh, creating a, a text box and changing it with action script. So I'm just going to delete this action script for now and I'm going to show you some, some more things we can do with our text here. So we can also change it to an input text box and what that basically does is if we run our movie here we can now select our text. We, we can also type in our own text. So it's a good way of creating forms if you want uh, to create like a user uh, suggestion or input box for your website or anything where you want your user to, to type stuff in. So that's the basics of, of creating our text here. Now another neat thing we can do with our text is we can also resize it how we can like skew it, stretch it, because basically it's just a it's just a vector image created by your font. So we can do we can treat it like a shape, basically. And if we wanted want to make some changes to the shapes of these individual uh, characters here, what we do is we go to modify and break apart so we break apart a text box. Another way of doing that is just hit control B on your keyboard. Now if you hit control B once now we've got each individual letter is its own text box now but we want to actually convert all these to shapes so you actually want to hit control B twice and if, once you hit it twice now our text boxes are gone and each one of these letters is its own shape. So if we wanted to make some changes to these shapes. For example, we want to change some of these the lines. These are basically just uh, these are just vector lines now. And we can select the individual ver vertices or, or, or points here. So yeah, we've basically converted our text into a shape. And now since they're a shape, we can we still change the colors like we would normally do. Uh, but one thing we can also do is we can we can add we can create gradients with these uh, with these text objects. So you can create uh, you know, you can create gradients like this, and you can modify these gradients. And basically, you just treat it like. Uh, like you would any other shape. So I'm just going to undo this uh, this gradient here, and 
I'm just going to make this look kind of nice. So I'll zoom out, I'll select all my text, and just resize it a bit so you can see it. And I can select, I can select these individual words and resize them. This is some text. So you can uh, basically use this technique to do some interesting typography. And since these are these are shapes, we can also we can also apply lines to them. So if we select our ink bottle tool and we'll select a three pixel line, we can draw our line segments around these. Let's see, what else can we do? We can use the paint bucket tool. Um, we can also delete, or we can use our eraser. And we can just sort of mess around with these in general. So another thing we can do with our text is we can uh, can rotate it. Now there's uh, there's a few different layers of options here in our in our properties panel. And if you go to this little arrow here, you can expand it, and you can see these extra options, or you can just double click on it. Now. Another thing we can do with our text is we can we can make it vertical. So if we go to this button here, it will say change orientation of the text. Now we can change that. Um, not sure if you can see this, but it says uh, there's horizontal, which is our default, left to right, and then there's vertical left to right and vertical right to left. So I'm going to select vertical left to right, and you'll see that now it's a vertical vertical text. Now once we select, once we change our orientation, we can also change the rotation. So if we select the rotation here, you can see that our our characters are now are now right side up. And if you keep clicking this, it sort of goes back and forth. Now if we go ver uh, if we change our orientation to right to right to left, It's uh, basically the same thing. It's right to left. Hmm. Okay, so the difference between uh, between right to left and left to right is if you have more than one line. So here I've added an extra line. If you have more than one line, it basically changes the order. So my first line is uh, this is line, t or sorry, my text box here, and then this here is the second line. Now, if I change this from right to left, it'll put the first line on the right, and then the subsequent lines will go to left. So if I were to type in another line here, this is line three. So now I'm going right to left. And this is 4. So again, if I change this from right to left back to left to right, it's now in the left to right order. Pretty simple. Now, another option we have here for our text is this right here, the character position and we can select normal which will just display your text normally we can also use a subscript and a superscript superscript basically puts the the character or the the text that you select makes it smaller and puts it above the rest of the text here so if you're doing like physics equations or math equations uh, that can be kinda useful uh, and subscript is also useful if you're doing uh, annotations like a bibliography I'm not sure why you would uh, use Flash to to write an essay, but uh, we still have that option for whatever you need it for. 
Another thing we can do with our text is we can create hyperlinks. So we, if we have our our paragraph here, and say I want to create a hyperlink uh, to a website, you select the text that you want to be your link, and you come down here to our URL input field, and we type in HTTP, and then we type in our web link. And now if we run this animation, you'll see that when we hover our mouse over our hyperlink text, it's now a button. Now if I click on this button, it'll go to the URL that I specified. And we can also create a, a box around our text field. Uh, if we select dynamic text for our text box, we also have this option down here called show border around text. Now if we select that, it's going to have, there's going to be a line around our text. So if we test this movie clip here, we have this nice, uh, nice line around our text, which is good for if you're, if you're doing input, like an input text box. It just indicates that we can, we can type in this box here. And yeah, you want to make sure that this uh, that this option is selected right here. And there's our text box. Now I'm just gonna do a little example here to show uh, how we can. We can use ActionScript to create sort of a dynamic text effect here. So I'm just going to draw a text box here. And what we're going to do is we're going to count our frames. So I'm going to call this dynamic text box. I'm going to call it frame count. And I'm just going to put a little symbol in here to see what that'll look like. Okay, I'm going to align this to the right. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some action script to our keyframe here and we'll use a variable called frame number and we're going to start that off at zero now we're going to add an on enter frame function here and this function applies to our, our root movie clip since we haven't specified any particular object it assumes that this is going to be this function is going to run every time our root movie clip enters the frame and we're going to increase our frame num by one and then we're going to set our text box value which we called frame count and we can set the value of that text to equal the number of our frame so if I run this you'll see that now it's counting our frames and that'll just keep going until we close our animation.